Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. And in this video, we'll be building a chat GPT application that will allow us to communicate with the OpenAI server, send our request, and get the response. If you haven't checked out ChatGPT, then you can simply go to chat.openai.com slash chat. And this is where you will see the ChatGPT and you can just, you know, chat with it. So if I want to say anything, how are you? That's where the artificial intelligence is going to, uh, you know, go ahead and answer your questions. Now you can ask the, this anything you want. When was Swift UI released? And it's going to give you the answers for that. And it, it can be very, very complicated also. You can actually ask uh, chat GPT to build the complete view model if you're using MVVM or you can write validation and it can also write code and all the stuff. So what we want to do is to integrate this functionality into our application. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. The first thing you need to do is to go to this URL or simply search for OpenAI API keys which will take you to this URL and you will have to create a key. The key will be created using create new secret key button. And once you click on the button, it will give you the key, copy the key at that point because you will never be able to see that key again. So once you click on that, you will see the key, just copy it and then paste it somewhere very safe because you will never be able to see it again. Okay, and you need the key for that. Now the question is, well, how do we integrate it into our Swift UI application. For that, we are going to use a library called OpenAI Swift from Adam Rush. This is a really nice, simple to use library that you can integrate OpenAI easily in like 10 seconds. All right, so make sure that you thank Adam for it and make sure that you put a star over there so that other people can also recognize it and other people can also use it, all right? Now I have already created my Swift UI application so that I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the URL, OpenAI Swift. This is my Swift UI application. You can see it's completely blank, nothing going on. Let's go to file, add a package, and let's go ahead and search for OpenAI package. So OpenAI Swift, so there we go. So I can just click on that, double check it that this is the correct package I'm looking for and looks like it, and then adding a package. And that sounds about right. We will only have one target anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add to that. Okay, so it has been added, as you can see right there. Again, make sure that you have the API key, click on the create new secret key, copy the key, because you will never be able to see it again, somewhere safe. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our application. The first thing we need to do is to kind of like initialize the OpenAI Swift. For that, I'm just gonna go ahead and import OpenAI Swift, okay? Once it is imported, I can go ahead and initialize OpenAI. So you can do that anywhere you want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and since I only have one view, which is the root view, I'm just gonna do that over here. And this is the key I'm gonna paste. Your key will obviously will be different. Now we need to work on a little bit on the interface, okay? So what do we need in our interface? Well, it really depends how far you want to go, but uh, let's go ahead and I will start with the navigation view. We don't even need a navigation view, by the way. So, I mean, I'm just going to add that so that eventually I can go ahead and get some sort of a navigation title. So I can go ahead and say navigation title and I can say chat GPT, okay? Now, what other things do we need over here? Over here, Well, we need the text box or the text field so we can write something. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a search state variable right here. So that whenever we write in the text box, that value will go into the variable. So let's go ahead and type the text field. And I will say type here. Whenever I type something, it's gonna go ahead into the search variable, all right? And when I submit it, 
then we can do something. If search is empty, it's not empty. And right now we're only checking for not empty over here. I think you should also be checking for trimming it out. Uh, so empty is not gonna completely satisfy in some cases where the person is just pressing tab or space. So make sure that you account for those scenarios also. And now we can go ahead and perform the actual search. All right, so instead of doing it over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and call perform open AI search. This is my own function that I'm just gonna type so that we don't have a lot of stuff going on inside that button click or the submit of the text field. Now I can go ahead and create the function which is perform open AI search. There we go. So now we can go ahead and say openai dot send completion. And we have a couple of different things over here that we need to send in. Uh, with what? Well, with search. There we go. And the completion handler is going to return you a result. Now we can perform a switch on the result. And it will have success, which will give you success and we will do something with it. And it will also, it can have a failure, which can have some sort of uh, error. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say failure, and we can go ahead and kind of like print out the failure. This is the actual error actually, all right? Now once we get the success portion, this is where we will get all the information. So let's get, just go ahead and put it on the console. Success.choices is an array dot first, first choice, because it may give you like different results. And then we're just always going to take the first choice. And we can also go ahead and trim it. So trimming characters, meaning sometimes it will have the white spaces and new lines, and I don't really care about that. So let's go ahead and trim it out. Okay, there we go. So this is what we will end up uh, getting in the end, all right? And if it's not possible, then just go ahead and print out an empty string because all of this is kind of like optional because of the first. Okay, so this looks promising. Now, since I'm printing it on the console, I would like to run this application in an actual simulator so I can see what exactly is going on. And we will then work on the designs. First, we just want to see that if the OpenAI Swift is returning us with the correct response. If we are able to, you know, search or if we are able to uh, interact with the OpenAI protocol, OpenAI endpoints. Okay, let's go ahead and type something over here. I'm gonna say, how are you? Okay, and there we go. You see that right there, you can see they're saying, I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Forget about these errors. These errors are just coming from Xcode. I mean, we can fix that eventually later, or you can try to see how to fix this stuff. But this is what we are looking for, which is saying, I'm doing well, thanks for asking. So you can see that the OpenAI is definitely working. Now, what about if I ask some, something else? When was Swift UI released? And everything should go to the console. So there we go. So if UI was unveiled 2019, WWDC, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it looks like this is working, but we don't really want this to be on the console, right? We want this to be on the screen so that user can actually see that stuff. So how do we do that? Well, there are many different ways of doing that. What I can do is we can create a very simple struct to hold the question as well as the answer. All right, and what we are going to do is now we have we are holding the question and the answer. I think you will get the answer. I'm not sure if it has to be nullable or optional. Uh, we can remove that because we will have the answer in most cases, I guess. So now once we get the answer, instead of all of this, we can actually create question and answer which will be simply a question and answer. We can pass in the question 
So the question will be coming from the search. That's the question that you just typed in. And the answer will be coming from all of this stuff that we were actually printing it out anyways. There we go. Okay. All right. Apart from that, we should also have some sort of an array to hold our questions and answers. So I'll create an array, questions and answer on line number 24, as you can see. And once I get the question and answer, I can just go ahead and say questions and answers dot append the question and answer. Nice. Apart from that, we can also go ahead and put the search to be kind of like empty because we're done. We would also like to display everything on the screen, okay? And it should be scrollable also. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and add a scroll view and show indicator, show indicators. We will set it to false. I don't really care that much about the indicators. And let's go ahead and fix that because I think I made a mistake. There we go. Uh, for each, we're going to run the loop for each for the question and answers. We get the, we'll call it QA, not answer, because it's question and answer. And now we can go ahead and try to display these things. Now, how you display these things is kind of like up to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a V stack over here, which displays the question and answers. All right. Answer this time is not really nullable, so we can remove that. There we go. Okay, and let's see what else can we do. We can probably add a little bit more padding. So we can add padding over here. Um, make life hour a little bit easier. What we can also do is instead of adding a text field, we can add a H stack and another property called searching so that we know that you are searching or not. When you're searching, then we will try to display some sort of a indicator that you're searching. So there we go, searching. Searching true, that's fine. Searching is over here, that's fine. Um, whenever there is a failure, so let's go up over here. We will say searching is equals to false. And whenever we are done over here, we can also say searching equals to false, okay? I guess if both of them are getting false, if you're turning both of them to be false, then uh, this will become false kind of like when you are done searching, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and run it again. And you can run it in the Xcode previews. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for the previews to load, but you can definitely run these things. So let's just wait for the preview and see if it actually comes up correctly. Sometimes it does take a while. Uh, let me go ahead and build the app again. And we will, oops, uh, there we go, we'll run it again. Sometimes it does have to, you know, refresh. Okay, let's go ahead and ask something. How are you? And you can see the indicator. And there we go, how are you? I'm fine, blah, 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 okay. Uh, when was Swift UI released? So if I was released, well, okay. Um, what else do you want to go? When is WWDC? There we go. So you can actually see, I'm not sure why I think 2020 is set to begin. So I can say, when is uh, WWDC 2023? It's not been announced yet. Okay, and scrollable, so that's always good. You can actually scroll once you reach at the end. So there you have it. We have created a complete chat GPT application using the OpenAI Swift library. Uh, make sure that you have the API keys and obviously make sure to thank Adam for his amazing library and make sure that you thumbs up or start his library. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses. 
you can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, including my brand new course, which is on building a reminders application clone with Swift UI and core data. This is an amazing course that's going to take you on a journey to completely build from scratch uh, the reminders application. It will have the notification, it will be using core data, a one-to-many relationship. It's going to be a great course. Apart from that, if you are interested in learning about Surf UI, then I have a 26-hour course on Surf UI. If you're interested in augmented reality, then check out my reality kit course. And I have a lot of other courses, as you can see, also the core data course. So there you have it, a lot of courses. If you are still doing UI kit programmatically, then I have a course for you right there. All the links to the courses along with their coupon links will be right there in the description. Check out my links in the YouTube description and hope you enjoy these courses. Thank you so much.